Yeah. <laughs> Uh, now we are going back to uh, Graves' disease. Um, we are going to uh, to tackle the, the three lines of treatment of uh, Graves' disease. Uh, and we are going to start with the radioiodine ablation. Uh, actually, radioiodine ablation is uh, at the, the most commonly used uh, line of treatment in the North America and United States specifically, uh, which may be not the case uh, here in Egypt and not the case in Europe. Uh, that's why we have chosen uh, first to tackle radioiodine ablation. So um, we are going to hear from uh, uh, Dr. Alia El uh, the president of Alexandria Syrod Association. She is going to discuss uh, the radioiodine ablation as uh, a line of treatment for uh, the treatment of Graves' disease. So go uh, go ahead, Dr. Alia. Uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Dr. Alia, please unmute your phone. Uh, you see my slides? But not, uh, uh, not in, in full, full screen. screen. Yes. Okay. First of all, the iodine 131 is a beta emitting radionuclide with a physical half life of eight days and an average range in the tissue of 0.4 millimeter. It is administered either orally or intravenously as sodium iodine. From the pathophysiological uh, effect of radioactive iodine, it is selectively lo localized uh, uh, in the functioning thyroid tissue where it uh, ablates these uh, tissues and emitting a beta particles. It has also a biological effect that includes the necrosis and the impaired replication of non-destroyed follicular cells. This results in atrophy, fibrosis, and a chronic inflammatory response, which result in permanent thyroid failure. Also, the radioactive iodine treatment for Graves' disease is followed by changes in thyroid autoimmunity that may result in transient increase in the TSH receptor antibodies with thyroid stimulating activity and the de nouveau appearance of these antibodies with TSH blocking activity. The aim of treatment with radioactive iodine is the achievement of the non-hyperthyroid status, either in the form of eosyroidism or hypothyroidism. The indication include the goiter recurrence, the ablation of residual thyroid tissue in case of malignant of salmopathy after surgery, but during an inactive state of orbitopathy. Female planning for pregnancy in the future in more than four to six months following the radioactive iodine therapy, individual with comorbidities increasing surgical risk, patient with previously operated or externally irradiated neck. Also, it includes patient with contraindications so to the anti thyroid drugs medication use, when the TSH is previously suppressed less than 0.1 micro unit per international liter, per liter, especially in all individuals above the uh, 65 years old, in postmenopausal women who are not on estrogen or biphosphonates, patient with cardiac risk factor or heart diseases or osteoporosis, individual with hyperthyroid symptoms. The contraindication include the absolute one, which is pregnancy because iodide cross the placental barrier and lactation, as in this condition, lactation should be discontinued at least four to six weeks or therapy should be delayed until lactation success in order to minimize the radiation dose to the breast. The relative contraindication include the active thyroid orbitopathy, especially in smoker and individual unable to comply with radiation safety guidelines. The radioactive uh, uh, iodine treatment necessitates the close cooperation between the endocrinologist and the nuclear medicine physician. Evaluation of the patient before the radioactive iodine includes 
patient history with a special emphasis on previous treatment, the use of the anti drugs, the amiodarone, and other medication containing uh, 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 iodine or food containing iodine. The laboratory testing, the free T4, the free T3, the TSH, and the radioact and the uh, uh, thyroid peroxidase antibody, the thyroid technetium 99 scintigraphy, and the radio iodine 24 hour uptake should be more than 20%. If lower, other treatment modalities should be considered. The evaluation of the patient before the radioactive iodine should include the assessment of thyroid target volume by an ultrasound and in cases of intracerotic extension uh, due to the, the presence of a large goiter, we use the MRI or CT, but CT using contrast agents will impair the radio iodine uptake for weeks to months, making therapy with radioactive iodine impossible during that time. Also, it is important that in female patient in the childbearing period, routine testing for pregnancy within 72 hours before the administration of the radioactive iodine should be done. Also contraception for four to six months after iodine therapy is also necessary. In patient with gravis of salmopathy, establishment of the thyroid eye disease activity by an experienced ophthalmologist is mandatory. For patient preparation, sorry, with uncomplicated mild hyperthyroidism, the preparation with anti drugs is unnecessary. While as a pretreatment with mesimazole and beta-adrenergic blockers for Graves' disease should be considered in patients who are at increased risk of complication, including severe hyperthyroidism, elderly patient, and patient with comorbidities. Since the radioactive iodine administration may cause a transient elevation in the free thyroid hormones for a seven days after administration, thus in patients with uncontrolled hyperthyroidism or high level of free T3, pretreatment with anti-thyroid drugs combined with beta blockers should be administered first. And in cases where the anti-thyroid drugs are contra uh, administration, are caught, uh, uh, their administration are contraindicated, uh, the administration should include the use of steroids and beta blockers. To reduce the risk of treatment failure, the anti thyroid drugs should be stopped prior to the radioiodine administration from two to three days up to one week. In case uh, it can be restarted three to seven days later and tapered over four to six weeks uh, as thyroid functions uh, become normal. Pregnancy should be eliminated unless the patient is premenarchal child, postmenopausal, has had a documented hysterectomy or tubal ligation. The patient uh, should be fasted to maximize the absorption of the radioactive iodine and informed consent should be taken from all patients. Patients should discontinue the use of iodide containing preparation, iodine supplement, and other medication that could affect the ability of the thyroid tissue to accumulate iodides for a sufficient time before surgery. As a point to be remembered that the radioiodine administration is very unlikely to precipitate a hypersensitivity reaction because it is free of the large stable iodine contamination. So even in patients with known iodine sensitivity, the radioactive iodine therapy can be performed safely. 
The strategy of the administration includes, in most of the cases, the radioiodine is administrated orally, but in patients with severe swallowing difficulty, it can be administrated in liquid form or intravenously in patients in whom vomiting is a problem. The liquid form has the advantage over the capsule that it is less expensive and easily dispensed as needed, but the risk of spoiling and the contamination is high. Care should be taken in patients who are incontinent of urine. Catheter is recommended before the radioiodine administration to allow safe disposal of urine containing radioiodine. Patient also should be encouraged to drink a large volume of fluid for a 24 hours period following the radioiodine therapy to lower the radiation dose to the blood. Usually the patient is advised to keep as much distance as possible between themselves and the others, including children, and to keep contact times as short as possible. The radioiodine treatment response includes after a single radioiodine administration, the patient may become either hypothyroid, eothyroid, or remain hyperthyroid. The radiation dosimetry includes the estimation methods and the calculation methods. The estimation methods is the so-called fixed dose, and the calculation method is based on the radioiodine uptake measurement. Calculation approach is advisable in patients less than 45 years of age and in children. The, <clears throat> the fixed dose is the easiest and the most practical method for radioiodine administration is uh, uh, made by giving an identical number of millicuries to all patients. The fixed dose amount varies from three to seven microcurie to 10 to 15 microcurie for Graves' disease. A high doses regimen of radioiodine treatment is more effective than the lower dose one. On the other hand, the calculation dose in this method, the estimated thyroid gland size uh, and the result of 24 hours radioactive iodine test is needed to calculate the amount of iodine uh, to administered in order to achieve a desired concentration of iodine in the thyroid gland. Delivered activity of from 80 to 200 microcurie per gram of thyroid tissue is generally appropriate. The dose effect of the radioactive iodine includes no clinical effect for three to four weeks, maximum effect usually in three to four months. Retreatment will usually not to be considered for four to six months. 90 to 95% of the patient no longer have hyperthyroidism after a single dose. Regarding the children, the radioactive treatment for the children is a commonest as the hyperthyroidism is most commonly as a cause of Graves' disease. And the risk of relapse in this age group is much higher than the others. Children with Graves' disease are usually treated with prolonged anti-thyroid therapy, often followed by thyroid surgery, because the, the prepubertal children have a poor remission rate after the anti-thyroid drug therapy, have a greater risk of developing drug-induced side effect. Radioactive iodine therapy should be avoided in children younger than five years, due to the malignancy risk as thyroid gland is unique in its developmental sensitivity to malignancy after radiation exposure. For children between five and 15 years of age, the radioactive iodine therapy may be considered. Uh, 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 the radioactive iodine activity is calculated to be delivered the desired amount of radiation dose based on gland side and radioactive iodine uptake. Gland size also influences the treatment outcome. When the thyroid gland exceeds 80 gram, remission rates after 100 uh, iodine 131 therapy are poor, and consequently, surgery is preferred when the gland is large more than from 60 to 80 gram. The side effects of the iodine include uh, transient swelling of the goiter and dyspnea in patients with a large goiter, 
thyroid swelling may last for approximately one week. Slight discomfort of the salivary gland may, pre may be present, but permanent injury is uncommon. Exacerbation of heart arrhythmia and heart failure in patient poorly controlled before radioiodine therapy. Transient rise in free hormones level seven to 10 days after radioactive ID. The occurrence of hypothyroidism is the main side effect of the radioiodine treatment. Its rate varies and its incidence continue to increase over time so that lifelong follow-up is essential. Hypothyroidism incidence is higher in gravis disease than in toxic goiter and is rare in solitary hyperfunctioning nodules. The levothyroxine medication is needed in all patients with elevated TSH after the radioactive ID. The ophthalmopathy uh, uh, is always associated with the radioactive ID in treatment with a, a greater risk of the appearance or worsening of this ophthalmopathy in patients with Graves' disease. The risk is increasing with the smoking Consequently, patients should be strongly advised to quit smoking. Administration of prednisone help to prevent exacerbation of, of salmopathy. Elevated the TSH level may worsen the of salmopathy after the radioactive iodine, so thyroxine substitution may, may be started in these patients. The, radio, uh, the radiation-induced cancers, a small increase in the relative risk of diagnosis or deaths from thyroid cancer after radioiodine treatment has been reported in large epidemiological studies, but it seems to be more associated with the underlying disease than treatment with react radioactive iodine. The follow-up of uh, after radioactive iodine treatments include a regular review of the thyroid function test in patients who have undergone radioiodine treatment is essential to assess the efficacy of the treatment and detection of developing the hypothyroidism or post-treatment immunogenic hyperthyroidism. First, the TSH and the free T4 examination should be performed not longer than four to six weeks after radioiodine therapy. Shorter interval of about two to three weeks are recommended for patients who have received antithyroid drugs who have an increased risk of ophthalmopathy. In patients with overt hyperthyroidism, the antithyroid drugs should be restarted three to five days after radioactive iodine therapy. In persistent hyperthyroidism, the radioiodine treatment can be repeated after uh, six to 12 months. In post therapy immuno, uh, immunogenic hyperthyroidism, antithyroid drugs used for some months and a second radioiodine treatment is not necessary. Annual laboratory tests, at least including the TSH, are necessary for life, even in patients with athyroidism after the radioactive iodine therapy. So my conclusion is that the radioactive iodine has been in use for over than six years as a treatment of hyperthyroidism. It has his own patient in comparison with the other two modalities, either the antithyroid drugs or the surgery, and the treating doctor is the one who select the uh, ideal uh, uh, role for the treatment of Graves' disease. And thank you for your attention.